Transcribed. Ladies and gentlemen, the Railroad Hour. And here comes our summer show train. Tonight, the Association of American Railroads presents a new musical version of Rip Van Winkle by Lawrence and Lee, starring Gordon McRae and his lovely guest, Dorothy Warren Show. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. Yes, tonight, another musical premiere is brought to you by the American Railroads, the same railroads that bring you most of the food you eat, the clothes you wear, the fuel you burn, and all the other things you use in your daily life. Now, here is our star, Gordon McRae. Thank you, Marvin Miller, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Say, did you ever wish you could lie down and take a nap for about 20 years? Well, tonight we're going to bring you the story of a snooze like that, inspired by the great early American writer, Washington Irving. We'll have to turn the clock back a couple of centuries, though, to the days of the 13 colonies. And we'll ask you also to think of Dorothy Warren's shoulders, alas, with a sharp chin and a sharper tongue. As for me, well, my name is Van Winkle, my nickname is Rip. To all the young ladies, my hat I do tip. To gladden their hearts, I would lay down my life. Were it not for the fact it would rankle my wife. I live near the village of New Amsterdam. As full up with people as a pig's full of ham. They're thinking no changing the name to New York. As full up with people as a pig's full of pork. No finer a farmer than Rick can be found for seeding and weeding and plowing the ground for feeding the heifer and shearing the pig. There's only one trouble I'd much rather sleep. I guess the back metal can wait till tomorrow for a moment. Rip! Rip Van Winkle! If I were asleep, I'd swear I was having a nightmare. Rip Van Winkle, where are you? Uh, since I'm not asleep, it must be the voice of my loving wife. Rip! Rip! That's Dame Van Winkle, all right. Coming, coming, my love, coming. Now, how is a man's wife to keep her self-respect along with a son and a daughter when her husband spends the live-long day idling away his time and paying no attention whatsoever to his farm or his family or the affairs of his house? Well, you see, Nicholas Vedder asked... Nicholas Vedder, is it? A lazy, useless, loathsome ne'er-do-well, almost as bad as my own husband. Why I ever married you, Rip Van Winkle, I'll never know. I know, my love. Sometimes I ask myself the same question. <laughs> dog, that everlasting dog of yours. Well, now, what harm is he doing? I've told you a thousand times not to let that untidy creature track the mud of the streets onto my rugs. Shoo! Shoo, dog! Come with me, Wolf. You never do an honest day's work in your life. Never earn so much as a picture of King George stamped on the copper pen. <laughs> uh, what's a man to do? Our mistress leads us a dog's life of it, all right. Ah, but there's one escape for us. The Catskills. The Catskill Mountains. <laughs> yes, sir, as long as a man can climb the purple hills and hunt for a squirrel, there's no complaining. Come on, Wolfie boy, I'll get my gun and we'll show the world it's not such a bad life after all. <laughs>
There's no sport like squirrel hunting in the wooded hills in autumn. When a man grows tired late in the afternoon, why, he can throw himself down on the green knoll. And from an opening between the trees, he can look down on the lordly Hudson River far below. Well, Wolfie, the day's almost gone. <coughs> By the time we get back to the village, the supper will be cold on the table, and my wife's good tongue will be hot in her mouth. What's the matter, Wolf? Do you see something down there in the glen? Oh, steady, steady there. There's nothing to brisk in your back. Oh, steady. Or is there? What's moving down there? Hello? Rip and twinkle. What? Well, who's that? Rip and twinkle. Who knows my name? I saw him. A short, square bill, old fellow. With thick, bushy hair and a grizzled beard. He was dressed like the old Dutchman of yore, and slung on his shoulders was a stout keg of Holland brew. Rip and Winkle, how do you do? Have a little, have a little, Catskill brew. Rip and Winkle, how do you do? Have a little, have a little, Catskill brew. Rip and Winkle, how do you do? Have a little, have a little, Catskill brew. Well, now, sir, I didn't trust that little old man, and neither did Wolf. And then he made a sign for me to come and help him carry the keg. Well, he was such a little man, and it was... Such a big keg, how could I refuse? I followed him up a narrow gully. From the sound of thunder, I expected at any moment to feel a large raindrop hit the end of my nose. I looked up. There wasn't a cloud in the sky. And ahead of me in a clearing was a sight to behold. There, in a wooden hollow, was a company of odd-looking little men, all dressed up in the same ridiculous fashion as my guide. They were playing at nine pins. They looked for all the world like the figures in an old Flemish painting. They seemed to be enjoying themselves, and yet they maintained the most mysterious silence. What's the matter, Wolf? What do you see? Tell me, lad. Why does your tail hang between your legs and... I got the shock of my life. But there, not a dozen paces in front of me, her head bent low over needlework, was Dame Van Winkle. Well, now, how did she get there? Did these strange little men kidnap her or steal her away? And if they did, whatever for? What they could want with Dame Van Winkle was far beyond me. They must be strange little men indeed. Well, I'm not a fellow to question my good fortune. So just as I was about to tiptoe off, the most remarkable thing of all happened. She looked up, and she smiled. Yes, sir, if I hadn't seen it with my own eyes, I'd not have believed it. I'd have just thought the corners of her mouth would crack. But no, there was Dame Van Winkle smiling as sweetly as the Cupid on our Heaven Bless Our Home sampler. Good evening, Rip. Good evening, Lance. Is it truly you, my love? No, a man should know his own wife, I should think. Oh, he should, he should. But there's been such a change about you, my love. <laughs> Somehow I, I never thought of you as a lass with such a delicate air. And I never heard such compliments from your tongue, Rip Van Winkle. <laughs> Young Molly, who lived at the foot of the did she have, the wife of Rip Van Wiggle, to make so sweet a sound? I should have heard a noise like this. Now, how is a man's wife to keep her self-respect when her husband spends the live long day idling away his time and paying no attention? No, nothing but honey came from her mouth. 
I scratched my head in disbelief. My wife turned into an angel on earth. Well, when you come right down to it, there's naught to complain about. Man may as well take his fortune as it comes, lift his voice in a song, and, well, see what happens. One evening last May, as I traversed the road, in thoughtless retirement, not dreaming of love, I chanced to espy the gay nymph I Turn for Act Two of Rip Van Winkle. How did today's high prices get that way? A good way to go about finding the answer is to start with a process of elimination. If we can rule out factors that have little to do with high prices, we can better focus on factors that directly bear on them. For that reason, I believe you'll be interested in an editorial which appeared recently in Commercial West, a leading Midwestern business publication. Here's what the editorial said, and I quote. Some people seem to think quite honestly that railroad freight rates represent a substantial part of the cost of most things we buy, and that freight rates have been a factor in forcing prices to rise. Those who do think that are wrong on both counts. First of all, freight rates had nothing at all to do with starting the rise in prices. Prices went up first long before the freight rates. When the last World War ended in 1945, railroad freight charges were no higher than when war began in Europe six years earlier. The first post-war increase in freight rates were not made until mid-1946, and by that time, prices generally had risen 50%. Second, railroad freight charges are always a very small fraction of the cost of most articles we buy, and today they represent a smaller fraction than they ever did before. Actually, since the last war began, railroad revenues, figured on the standard ton-mile basis, have increased only one-third as much as railroad wages as the cost of the many materials and supplies the industry must buy, and as consumer prices generally. To put the situation still another way, railroad freight charges today, in proportion to the price level, are actually lower than they ever were before in the line's long history. So don't blame the cost of carrying freight for boosting prices. It just isn't so. The fact is that the railroads have been doing a superb job with extremely inadequate earnings. End of quotation. So you see, increased freight rates have mighty little to do with the rise in prices of the things you buy. And now act two of the new Lawrence and Lee musical version of Rip Van Winkle, starring Gordon McRae as Rip and Dorothy Warren Schold as Dame Van Winkle. Well, sir, there I was, as happy as old Peter Stuyvesant with a new wooden leg. Congenial company. My wife's disposition turned inside out, or outside in, as the case may be. Would you like to join us in a square dance, my Herr Van Winkle? Thank you kindly, sir, but Dame Van Winkle considers dancing a frivolous pastime. Why, nonsense, Rip. I'll be your partner. What? I can't believe it. Dad's good, east is east. I mean, east is west, and up is down. And I like it fine this way. I like it fine. Skip, skip, skip the balloon. Skip, skip, skip the balloon. Skip, skip, skip the balloon. Skip the balloon, my darling. Flies in the buttermilk. Shoo, shoo, shoo. Flies in the buttermilk. Shoo, shoo, shoo. Flies in the buttermilk. Shoo, shoo, shoo. Skip the balloon, my darling. Skip, skip, skip to balloon, skip, skip, skip to balloon, skip, skip, skip to balloon, skip, skip to balloon, 
since the day Derek Von Bummel's daughter married the Burgermeister. Well, we danced like that at our wedding, too, Rip. Remember? I sure do. And you were the prettiest girl in New Amsterdam. By heaven, you still are. Believe me if all those endearing young charms which I gaze on so fondly to To change by tomorrow and plead in my arms like fairy gifts fading away. Thou wouldst still be adored as this moment thou art. Let thy loveliness. As it will And around the dear ruin Each wish of my heart Would entwine itself Verdantly That it is, my lad, that it is. Then I warrant it's time to tap the keg. The keg, you say? Aye. I'll pound this spigot in this barrel. Drinks, my hotties! Oh! <laughs> rip and winkle, rip and wink. Have a little, have a little, catch go drink. Well, I... I might just taste a drop if you can spare it. Not a bad brew. Tell you the truth, sir, the dancing did make me mighty thirsty. Ah. Rip and winkle, rip and rip. Have a little, have a little Catskill nip. I will, I will. One little old sip never hurt a man. Rip and winkle, rip and winkle, rip and winkle, rip and winkle. Oh, where 
am I? What happened? I must have dozed off. I dreamt all about that Dame Van Winkle. Oh. I knew it was too good to be true. By the ghost of good Peter Stuyvesant, I must have slept here all night. Oh, that brew, that wicked brew. What excuse should I make to Dame Van Winkle? My musket, where's my musket? Why, this isn't my gun. Those little old bandits, they stole my musket. Put this rusty flintlock in its place. Wolf? Wolf? Now, where'd that dog run off to? Oh! What's the matter with my poor joints? These mountain beds don't seem to agree with me. Doesn't look like my village, but it must be. Different houses, different names on the doors. <laughs> look at the beard. Look at the old man with the funny beard. Me? A beard on me? Uh, what? Why don't you let it grow all the way to your knees, Grandpa? <laughs> <laughs> now, this is all very strange. I don't know any of your faces. I, I can't even recognize your dogs. Have I... No friends here? Tell us who you are, old-timer. We'll tell you if you have friends or not. Alas, gentlemen, I'm a poor, quiet man and a loyal subject to the king. God bless him. The king? He's a Tory! A Tory! Run him out of town! A Tory! Please, I meant no harm. I meant no harm. I'm Rip Van Winkle. At least that's who I was when I dozed off in the mountains. Dozed off? He must have slept right through the Revolutionary War. Get out the way, Rip Van Winkle. Get out the way, Rip Van Winkle. Mr. Wardine Hullabaloo shall slept right through the Revolution. Now, wait a minute. I wait. Rip Van Winkle came to town. Long white beard a hanging down. Pwned his hair with a wagon wheel. Tied with a toothache in his heel. I'm not dead. I don't know what you're talking about. Get out the way, Rip Van Winkle. Get out the way, Rip Van Winkle. War is over. Tour is weeping. Rip Van Winkle just lay there sleeping. Get out the way, Rip Van Winkle Get out the way, Rip Van Winkle Mr. the whole bad hullabaloo Slept right through the revolution What's this Rip all Van Winkle came to town Long white beard a hanging down Combed his hair with a wagon wheel Died with a toothache in his heel So get out the way, Rip Van Winkle Get out the way, Rip Van Winkle War is over, tour is weeping Rip Van Winkle just lay there sleeping I can't understand this. I I can't understand it at all. Mama! Mama! I'm scared! Oh, hush. Hush, little Rip. Maybe the old man won't hurt you. Why, young lady, you're the very image of... No, it couldn't be. Well, you have the same name as my little son. He's called Rip in memory of his grandfather. And your name is Judith. Why, how did you know? I'm Judith Gardiner. Tell me, lass. What do you know of your father? Well, it's been 20 years since he went away from home. 20 years? Yes. And he's never been heard from since. And, and your mother? Is your mother still alive? Oh, no. Uh, she burst her heart with grief when your father went away, I suppose. Is that it? Oh, not at all. No, she burst a blood vessel in a fit of rage at a New England peddler. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That would be Dame Van Winkle right enough. Lass... I'm your father. My father? Mm hmm. Young Rip Van Winkle once, old Rip Van Winkle now. Oh, but where have you been these, these 20 years? Dreaming, my child. Dreaming. Oh, it's not been unpleasant, really. I dreamed that I was in the company of a lass who was the image of my wife, but whose tongue was as sweet as the honey in the comb. I thought it was only in my mind. But you see now, the dreams come true. Oh, welcome home, Father. My day shall be so wondrous free From all little birds that flew With careless ears from tree to tree On all so blessed you are not so blessed as 
Van Winkle was based on the famous Washington Irving story uh, by uh, Washington Irving, as I said, and was made into a musical by Lawrence and Lee. The Railroad Hour is brought to you each week at this time by the American Railroads. Truth, communism's deadliest enemy, can do much to help win the Cold War and to help prevent a worldwide hot war. Each day, hour after hour, Radio Free Europe beams the truth to millions of captive people behind the Iron Curtain helping to sow seed of hope and revolt against the Red Rulers and their collaborators. But your help is needed to build additional transmitters in Europe and in Asia, to send the truth to more millions behind the Iron Curtain. Support the independent, citizen-sponsored crusade for freedom and help truth fight communism. For full information, write to the Crusade for Freedom, Empire State Building, New York. One, New York. All aboard. Well, sir, it looks as though ready to pull out, and so until next Monday night and the world premiere of a new musical, The Emperor of San Francisco, this is Gordon McRae saying goodnight for myself and Dorothy Warren Show. Goodbye. <laughs> Gordon McRae can be seen in Warner Brothers on Moonlight Bay. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. This is Marvin Miller saying goodbye until next week for the American Railroads. And now stay tuned for your Monday night of music on NBC. The preceding was transcribed. Next, Vidu Sayao sings on the telephone hour on NBC.